Hello. So yesterday I got top 32 at the Santa Clara Regional and got my invite to Nationals. This is my first time topping a regional, so it's pretty awesome. It's the third one that I've been to in total. I decided to play tier limits with the Brandon High Spirits package and some Vistials. I wanted to play Drytron, but in this format, it's pretty weak. So uh, yeah, I went with the tier limit build. It is similar to some that you saw topping the most recent YCS, but with some changes. Uh, I'll just get into the deck profile. So I'm playing 40 cards flat. I agree with some of the comments that some other players made on uh, playing blind into matchups. So for example, if your opponent's playing tier and they see that you're playing 40 cards, they're probably not going to set up a best dweller against you blind. And that seemed to work out for me. Nobody did a blind dweller against me, so that's cool. So playing 40 cards is nice. And also a lot more consistency in mills, uh, obviously. So uh, three random heart. Uh, the only normal summon in the deck. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you always play through them. Uh, three is Shailen, three Havnus, three Merley. Uh, I don't think there's any reason not to max out up the names uh, at this point. Again, more consistency on milling. And you need to see them with the Branded and High Spirits package. So basically, Branded and High Spirits plus one of these is full combo. And then the fact that Merle is level 2, of course, you can send it off of Sprint, Reborn it with Elf, so you play through that as well. And even Havnus, it's probably the best one to open with uh, Branded and High Spirits. Because you want to be able to send Merle later with Sprint, or you can do that. Uh, 3, Pellerino. 4, Pellerino, basically, with Terraforming. Yeah, Pellerino is just insane, being able to pop, and the 500 boost is pretty significant. And then one tier limits grief. I know not everybody plays this card, but I think they are wrong to not play it because it's a better foolish burial. You can activate it when uh, you don't have any monsters on board. So you basically effectively just send one tier monster from deck to graveyard. And the fact that it is a uh, tier limit card means you can search it with the kit, obviously, and you can send it off of Rhino Heart with this graveyard effect. So it's really good. And then Obviously, it has the other effect to add back a banished tear trap, but that never came up for me. Uh, two scream. This card is okay. I might actually cut it in the future. It feels kind of one more. Uh, like it, it helps when you're already ahead, uh, for the most part. But the graveyard effect, being able to search a trap, is really good. Um, so it's like a decent card, but probably won't play it. Uh, one in suffusion, obviously. Uh, three branded high spirits, then Cartesia and Albion. So this is the high spirits package. Um, you want to play both of these because if you see uh, Brandon high spirits plus Cartesia, then you won't be able to activate it since you don't have something to search. And since Albion lists Fallen of Albaz on it, you can search it from deck. Then his ability to uh, dump another high spirits from deck and then draw one is really good. Helps you get these out of deck because you don't necessarily want to be drawing them later in the game. Yeah, this package allows you to uh, play pretty well around Bestials, because if you open this plus a name, uh, you activate it, and you send Vulcalos, you start fusion summoning, and essentially what will happen is you'll end up with Vulcalos on board uh, before your opponent has any opportunity to activate a Bestial monster. So it's extremely good against uh, in the mirror match and every deck that plays Bestial. Uh, one tier limits heartbeat. I might bump this up to two. This card's very good. I unfortunately barely saw it. Um, you can add back a trap, but obviously it's uh, then an engine out to Mystic Vine, uh, other floodgates, any spell trap. You can even use it on your own spells and traps if, just to be able to send a card from hand to graveyard and start fusion summoning or whatever you want. This card is really, really good. Uh, two Sulik. I think that's uh, pretty self explanatory. If you mill one, that's fine because you can search. And it's a continuous negate. And then one crime. I really liked having this in the main deck. Uh, I did actually get to use the effect to add back vanished monsters quite a few times because people were banishing them off of Bistils, obviously. But um, searchable counter trap is very powerful. When people tried to even leave me, I just negate it. Uh, it's a counter trap, obviously. Yeah, it's just a very good card. Uh, three super poly, pretty self explanatory. Two talents. Normally I play three, but 
I did want to keep this list to 40 cards, so I did cut it down to two. This card was pretty good. I just didn't see it that much, unfortunately, because I was playing two. Um, I think it'll get better over time, especially next format with the Ishizu cards. Fall by the Grave barely saw this card as well, but yeah, it's just good. Just, it's pretty good. Uh, three Magnemote. So for the Bistial package, I played three Magnemote, one Druid's Worm, one Saronair. So this is probably the biggest weakness of the deck, I would say. It's only playing five of these. I didn't see them as often as I wanted to. Uh, seeing them it makes a huge difference in the mirror match. So if you lose the die roll, it becomes pretty rough when you don't have them. So I would definitely I play like two Druid's Worm, maybe even two Saronair on, on top of that. Saronair I think is pretty good, actually, because... Even though he is the weakest in terms of his uh, secondary effect, being able to get the high spirits out of your deck is pretty good since you don't want to uh, be trying them later, as I said before. And he can also help chain block with uh, Sprint or Beatrice, whatever you send off of Beatrice. Uh, yeah. So I would definitely keep him in. Then we can go into the extra deck. Two kit. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to keep two here. I didn't really end up needing two during this event, but I wouldn't feel comfortable cutting it down to one at this point. Um, it never really got banished by uh, by my opponent, but yeah, I would just keep it at two. Aurel Colors, an extremely good card. Uh, it works with the High Spirits package. You need to have this in your extra deck just to play that as well. But the both of the effects are insanely good as well. Collider Heart, self-explanatory, and our super poly targets. Uh, Gurura being level 6 is really significant since you can overlay with one of the best seals to go into Beatrice. Uh, one Baron, since Cartesia is a level 4 tuner, uh, if you open the High Spirits package, you can just go into Baron with any of your level 6s. So yeah, very solid card. And it's another negate to stop cards like Evenly. Abyss Dweller, pretty self-explanatory. Then we have one Baguska. So this is a card that I put in due to some testing that I did earlier in the week. I was playing against some flu players. When you get D-Shiftered, you don't want to pass on nothing. You want to pass on this, because it's very annoying for your opponent to deal with, unless they have like an, an, a board breaker and full combo. But uh, yeah, this, this was really good. Uh, I played round one against Exo Sister and... Uh, in game two, I believe, I got de-shifted uh, when I was going first. And I set up a goose gun, he couldn't out it. So it bought me like three turns, and then I could uh, start playing. Really, really good card. I would definitely keep it in. Beatrice, uh, amazing card. I don't really know what to say. You can send any card from your deck to the graveyard as a quick effect. The best deals are level six. And so this is, again, one of the reasons why I would want to play more best deals, is to make this card more consistently. It's ridiculous. Um, elf, self-explanatory, Sprint, yep, to be able to send your tier monsters, uh, I mean, Merly, exactly, but um, yeah, the secondary effect was cool to have, I never got to use it, but I threatened it, because I had like Sprint plus Dweller on, on board, but yeah, really good. Dark, Broken, um, Underworld Goddess, I played this because uh, of Sphere Mod, actually that I put in the side deck. It's actually very hard for this deck to out, so I need to have like one out to it at least. Never ended up making it, but uh, because the games ended before we got to that point. Once I sphere moded them, uh, it was pretty much over. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's. I think it's a nice card to have in the extra deck just to deal with any other problematic towers like monsters too. Moving on to the side deck. Three sphere mode. I was playing Lava Golem previously, but I realized that Lava Golem is actually not strong enough to deal with the boards. Because when I made my board, like a typical end board is going to be like Rule Kalos plus Baron plus Kaleido Heart. And you'll have like uh, Crime Set or Sulik. And Lava Golem is just not enough to deal with that. And Sphere Mode is. So yeah, I only saw this card like twice, but when I did, it was game ending. So it's, I think it's really good. And you can even use it against flu players. I never played against uh, flu this weekend, but yeah, you can like uh, bluff evenly matched, have them combo uh, during your turn to set up like a, an Apex Avian. So they'll have three monsters and then you could theoretically distribute some of this and completely destroy them. Never got to do that, but yeah. 
It's just a good card. Uh, Forbidden Droplet. Uh, this was to deal with uh, Abyss Dweller, but people really, weren't really making it against me, so, uh, or at least they never got to. So, yeah, it wasn't that great, but I, I think I would still keep it in. It did help me out the Ibli Lock once. Three Dark Hole, this card uh, underperformed, I would say. Uh, the idea was to deal with um, Flu, Exo Sister. You know, it's like another another plan to go second against those those uh, D Shifter Floodgate style decks. Um, but I only played against one Exo Sister and did not play against Flu, as I said before. So wasn't great. And I didn't end up setting it in against Tier Sprite because they have negates for it. So I'd probably replace this, maybe with uh, Spooky Dogwood or uh, more Biz deals. Uh, two Cosmics. Yeah, Cosmic is, is pretty good. Maybe one thing I would change is bumping this up to three and, and cutting out on the Dark Holes. Eradicator was insane. The the two times I saw it, I think. Because um, you can use the Biz deals with them. I think if I had bumped up more on the Biz deal package, it would have been more effective, but... Yeah, I think this card is insane as well. Uh, it You basically just went after resolving it because you have perfect information for like the next three turns and there's no way your opponent can come back from it regardless of what you call. And then Scattershot is a level two. Uh, I think that's self-explanatory. So yeah, my matchups are round one. It was against uh, Exosisters, which I won uh, after losing the die roll. Our round two was against an Earth Machine, Hello Han FTK style kind of deck. It was one of my friends who was playing it, and I uh, ended up winning 2-1 despite losing the die roll. Round three was a pretty crazy match against Sub Terror. Uh, he was playing D Shifter, so I got shiftered in games two and three, which was quite annoying. But I was able. To, uh, I did win in time because I was up on life points. And then, and then I played against a bunch of tier decks in a row. I think it was one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Five tiers in a row. And the first two were sprite versions, and then a bestial, and then a sprite, and then a sprite uh, version. And yeah, I lost uh, two of those matches. Those are the ones where I lost the die roll. I mean, what are you really going to do in that case? I think if I had, uh, yeah, if I had more bestials, I would have had a better chance at those. But yeah, it's it's pretty hard to win those. And then um, yeah, in the final round, I lost against in Eldritch deck in time that one is very frustrating i should have definitely won that so but yeah in the day it was nine runs of swiss I ended up going six three uh should have been seven two uh, and i finished 27th out of the 32 uh, players that topped so i got an invite to nats yep overall it went well i had fun uh and can't wait for this format to be ruined by issues or cards Thanks for watching.